In this video, we'll look at how to use a monic cyclogometer. In the Excise Physiology Lab, we have a selection of monic cyclogometers, including one which can perform a Wingate anaerobic test on. Here in the lab, you will predominantly use a monic to conduct exercise tests. You can see a monic is different to a traditional exercise bike, in which it is classed as a rope brake cyclogometer. On a traditional exercise bike, workload is increased or decreased using buttons or a dial, whereas here workload is controlled by cadence and by calibrated weights placed in the suspended carriage to apply tension to the rope. We'll look at this a little further later in the video. When using the monarch with a participant or athlete, it is important to ensure that the bike is set up appropriately. You can see here how to adjust the seat height. And please note that the locking pin needs to be unscrewed all the way and you can see that I hold the seat with my other hand as once the locking pin is removed, the seat will drop. On the saddle post, each height option is numbered for ease. This is also handy if you'll be testing the same person repeatedly as you can note the number down to replicate settings. Please ensure that you position the height of the seat in accordance with what is set out by your lecturer, for instance, a desired knee angle. As well as seat height, the handlebars can be moved up and down and positioned closer or further away by using the release lever. Again, once loosened, the handlebars will drop, so hold on to the handlebars while you do this. Once at the desired position, ensure you fully tighten the lever to maintain the handlebar position. As you can see here, the monarch can provide info on cadence, heart rate if wearing a polar chest strap, time which is triggered on the first pedal revolution, speed, distance and calories burned. However, we commonly only use cadence and heart rate from the monarch screen. Next, we'll look at how to control the workload. As mentioned earlier, workload is controlled by placing calibrated weights on the suspended carriage, also the cadence. Commonly throughout a test, we'll ask participants to maintain a set cadence. Therefore, to control the workload, we simply adjust the weight. Here you can see the carriage on the bike. This weighs one kilo. To calculate the workload, you simply multiply the carriage load of one kilos by the cadence of 50 RPM. Here workload is therefore 50 watts. To provide different increments, there are a series of calibrated weights, 1.5 and 0.1 kilo. During a test, in order to achieve a desired workload, weights can be added to the carriage. For example, here one kilo has been added to the carriage in which I've already mentioned that the carriage itself weighs one kilo. Therefore, this is now two kilos. In order to work out the new workload, we multiply the load of two kilos by the cadence of 50 RPM, which would equate to a new workload of 100 watts. This process can be repeated across a range of workloads in which you can achieve a desired workload by simply multiplying the load and the cadence. 